I will start with the example. Example like this, and that's a typical exa canonical example of polynomial interpolation. So the example asks this: find a polynomial, polynomial degree free, uh, such that the value of this polynomial at the point negative one, zero, and two is one, and the value of this polynomial at the point one is three. The numbers here, the numbers here are chosen relatively randomly, so it doesn't really matter which numbers they are. We're going to discuss this sort of task, this sort of a problem in general on the next slide. But, but here I want to solve it. Uh, yes. So normally when you approach a problem like this, you can, I mean, one of the approaches to the problem like this will be as follows. You just, you take your polynomial, you take your you take your arbitrary polynomial of degree 3 with some unknown coefficients. Here they are. a naught x3, a1 x2, a2 x a3, like this. And then you take this value, take, take these conditions which are supplied, you plug this condition into your polynomial, and you come up with a system of linear equations with respect to your unknown coefficients a0, a1, a2, and a3. Here's my computations for that. For the point x equal negative 1, if I plug in that point, the equation I come up will be like this, negative a0 plus a1 take a2. There will be alteration of signs, obviously, because when you take the negative to the negative 1 to the powers, there will be alteration of signs. Plus a3 equal 1. The value at x0 is simply a3 equal 1. The value at x1 I just simply the sum of my unknowns, a0 plus a1 plus a2 plus a3 equal 3. It comes from here. And final value at the point 2, here we got some coefficients. Uh, 2 cube is 8, so it's 8 a0, 4 a1, 2 a2, a3 plus a3 equal 1. Is a system of linear equations which we need to solve. At this stage, Depending on what kind of system you're looking at, you may find some, maybe some ad hoc approach will be even more effective than row echelon form. But I didn't really, for instance. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. It's a nice, nice, a nice spirit at the one o'clock on Thursday afternoon. Uh, in this system, you see. Uh, the second equation gives you the, the value of one of the unknowns straight away, but I didn't really bother to develop some ad hoc approach. I just extracted the metrics. I, I send this metrics to the. I send this metrics to the. Uh, MATLAB or some other computer algebra system, and it gave me the solution. So here it is: the metrics which I extracted from here. It's rather, relatively. Uh, large metric, so I'll, I'll, I will open it slowly. Here's my coefficients: one, negative one, one, negative one, and one on the right hand side. Zero, 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 and one, and one. That's the second row. Third row: one, 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 and three. And the last one is eight, four, two, one, and one. So this time, if you remember, every time I presented the matrices in my in my lectures, I did the row echelon form reduction. This time, actually, I did the reduced row echelon form reduction, which even further up uh, for the for the MATLAB. It doesn't matter which way you what you ask from him, but if you do reduced row echelon form, basically you get you have the solution straight away. So if I go to the reduced row echelon form, here's my reduced row echelon form. I, I didn't do this by hand. I just fed this into the MATLAB, or, or to the Maple, actually. So here's my reduced row echelon form. Here it is. That, that is the reduced row echelon form, and that suggests the solution straight away, right? The A3 is 1, A2 is 2, A1 is 1, and A0 is negative 1. I encourage you to to check by computations, not by hand, but with the MATLAB or any other computer algebra system of your preference. But here's my solution. So my polynomial, if I take my coefficients, if I put them in here, here's the polynomial in question. Negative x3 plus x2 plus 2x plus 1. And that's the polynomial which answers the question here. It's a polynomial of the degree 3 
which satisfies these two, uh, this one, two, three, four requirements. Right. That's what people call the polynomial interpolation. So by having the values of a polynomial and at the fixed points, some finite number of fixed points, you just find the polynomial in at every other point. So you just fill in the gaps. And that's filling the gaps in the mathematical language is called interpolation.